Lael Brainerd joins us, director of the National Economic Council from the White House to talk about inflation, the shutdown and more. Director Brainerd, it's good to see you. Nice to see you. So I'd love your reaction to today's inflation print. I, I would think that it's good news. Certainly the market's taking it that way to get core PCE below that 4% level and really starting to step down. Do you, do you think we're on a sustainable path here to much lower inflation? Well, you said it. I think the uh, inflation data today is absolutely good news. It's what we've been expecting to see. You know, if you look at core, core inflation in particular, it's running at 2.2 percent on a three-month annualized basis. Uh, that is uh, really uh, very encouraging. We've seen unemployment now down below 4 percent for 19 months in a row during a period where inflation has come down and core inflation particularly is now in the range that it was pre-pandemic. But yet it's still it's still elevated. I mean, isn't it? We're still looking at 3.9 percent core inflation. Services inflation in particular is a problem. And then you have these forces out there, higher gas prices. And I know that's not into core, but it, it could seep its way in and it's certainly important. The strikes, UAW, potentially now healthcare workers, all of that, it, couldn't it threaten to keep inflation elevated? So I have to say the main story of all the naysayers was that you couldn't get core inflation to come down without a big increase in job destruction. That is not what we've seen. We've seen continued job creation and inflation at the core has come down into the range that we saw pre-pandemic 2.2 percent on a three month. That's very consistent with uh, where uh, people had been before the pandemic. Yes, I think there are risks to the economy. The uh, economy, however, has proven remarkably resilient. And I think the real question right now is we can't take that resilience for granted. And, you know, if you look at what's going on with House Republicans on the Hill in particular, I think you really just worry about an unforced error like a completely unnecessary shutdown, putting the economy at risk unnecessarily at a time when it's doing so well. well talk to us a little bit more about the, the potential economic risk of a shutdown. How, how great is it in your view? You know, I think that a, a shutdown is still completely avoidable. It is completely in the hands of the House, uh, the House Republicans in particular. Uh, if they want to avoid a shutdown, it's completely doable. Um, and in terms of uh, the risks, you know, think about it. 1.3 active uh, service members uh, working without pay, uh, air travel delays because of all those uh, air traffic controllers being asked to work without pay. Seven million mothers and children being turned away at grocery checkout lines if uh, they are not able to continue to access uh, WIC benefits. The list goes on and on. And again, it's completely unnecessary. It's a completely unnecessary risk to an economy that's otherwise proven so resilient. It should, though, all snap back, right, when they open the government again. I mean, I know there's lost productivity there, but in terms of lasting damage, is there any real worry? So I think really uh, the concern uh, is that uh, going into a shutdown unnecessarily, um, you know, just think about it. Three months ago, there was a bipartisan agreement, strong bipartisan majorities in both the House and Senate. They did a great deal, uh, cutting one trillion in spending. Uh, and now we're right back at it again with House Republicans. Now, before they were threatening to default, yeah. now they're threatening to shut down the government. I think that takes a toll. And it really takes a toll on all those people who would be essentially being asked to provide uh, really essential services to the American people without pay. I'm sure politically there's there's blame on both sides, but the toll that you talk about, you know, the way the way I'm hearing it from investors is, you know, it comes after this big standoff over the debt ceiling, the dysfunction and the inability for both sides to be able to work together to tackle our fiscal picture, which which is not looking great, is now costing us 
AAA credit ratings, warnings for more, for potential more downgrades from the rating agencies. Is there a concern? Are you concerned that the bond vigilantes could come after after U.S. debt and we could be looking at persistently higher rates as a result of what's happening or not happening in Washington? Well, I am concerned that House Republicans don't seem to understand uh, what they are putting at risk here. And again, completely unnecessarily. I mean, if you think about it, they're right back at it. It was just uh, three months ago that the president sat down with Speaker McCarthy, House Republicans, House Democrats, Senate Republicans, Senate Democrats, and the president all came together, did a deal. And the deal was very clear on the budget parameters. And yet here we are uh, just three months later rehashing uh, the same issues with even more draconian cuts uh, being put on the table at the threat by House Republicans of shutting the government down. Uh, it is uh, an unnecessary risk, and I really hope they'll take uh, the opportunity they have to act and to avoid it. But doesn't the administration take on some of the blame, at least, for the fiscal, for the fiscal picture and, and the outlook and the fact that all this legislation, and, and a lot of it is good stuff for the investment and for the future of our country, but is costing a lot of money and is going to increase the, the needs, the borrowing needs next year, the Inflation Reduction Act, the CHIPS Act, the Infrastructure Act. That's all, that's all coming, and that's all part of it. And it's all part of what's been frustrating to Republicans. So really, uh, Senate Republicans have come together, joined hands with uh, Senate Democrats, and have put out a path forward for keeping the government open and uh, have been taking action that's in line with the agreement that was reached uh, back just three months ago that did put the country on a sustainable fiscal path with $1 trillion in spending cuts. You know, if you look at the economy, we just got those uh, second quarter GDP numbers uh, yesterday. And a big, important part of that was business investment. Businesses investment is responding to these great investment incentives to build here in America, employ Americans, to invest in the future of the country, whether it be in semiconductors or in the clean energy transition. So we're seeing a lot mm -hmm. of really strong long-term investments as a result of that important certainty that investors are getting yeah. in that legislation. As far as the economy goes, Director Brainerd, I think the fact that this shutdown is coming at a time where there are a lot of potential shocks. Interest rates continue to rise in the market. Obviously, that's, that's a headwind for consumers and the overall economy. We have the resumption of student loan payments coming at the very same time. Gas prices have riven, risen and oil prices continue to rise. This is all hitting. What are your expectations for growth in the last quarter of the year and into 24? Yeah, no, so you're exactly right. Um, a lot of these risks uh, come at a time uh, when I think uh, House Republicans should be recognizing the American people have made a lot of sacrifices. They are contributing to a very strong economic recovery. The uh, economy has been very resilient. The last thing we need is to put all of that progress, all of that hard work, so many Americans coming off the sidelines going into their workplaces, why put all of that at risk with an unnecessary uh, shutdown? All right. The message from, from the White House, Director Lael Brainerd, thank you so much for weighing thank in you. on today's numbers.